Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the beta 2 microglobulins. We talked about the Benz Jones proteins, urine electrophoresis, urine osmolality, urine potassium, urine chloride, urine uric acid, urine color, urine appearance, urine pH, urine odor, etc, etc, etc. Today, it's time to talk about a topic that drives students nuts. It's urine-specific gravity. You would not believe how many students, especially medical students, have no idea what specific gravity is. So, should we care about specific gravity? Let's learn it together. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Back to basic physics, because most doctors suck at it. What is density? Mass over volume. What is density of water? mass of water over volume of water okay no kidding so let's get this mass of water right here and let's say that this is one kilogram of water okay how much volume is in it you will find out that it's one liter you can do it the opposite way start with one liter of water and then put it on a scale and measure the mass how much it was one kilogram so what's the density of water mass over volume it's one kilogram over liter mass over volume since one kilogram has a thousand grams and one liter has a thousand milliliters you can also argue that the density of water is one gram per ml and since ml is the same thing as cubic centimeters then one gram over ml is the same thing as one gram over cubic centimeters all of this is the density of water. But hey, Metacosis, I read before that the density of water is a thousand, not one. Where did they get the 1,000 from? Easy. You can say that the density of water is 1,000 milligrams per liter, since one kilogram has 1,000 milligrams. So now I understand density, but what is specific gravity? Specific gravity is basically the density of that liquid relative to that of water. If the density of the liquid is higher than the density of water, then the entire ratio will be greater than 1. Amen. But if it's less than that of water, then the ratio will be less than 1. So when you find that the specific gravity is greater than 1, it means that this liquid is denser than water. But less than 1, less dense than water. Easy peasy. Now here are 5 questions for you. Which one of these two is more dense? Is it A or B? Knowing that the first cup has 1 molecule of sodium chloride, the second one has three molecules, but both have the same volume. So which one is more dense? Which one is more concentrated? Which one has a higher specific gravity? Which one has a higher osmolality with the L, which is the number of osmoles or milliosmoles per kilogram? And which one has the higher osmolarity, which is per liter? So what's the answer to the five questions? Please pause and think about it. The answer to all of these questions is choice B. B has more density. Why? More mass over the same volume. Look at that. More mass. Of course, B is heavier because it has more sodium chloride. Which one is more concentrated? B is more concentrated. Which one has a higher specific gravity? Specific gravity is what? The density of that liquid relative to water. Of course, this is more dense. It has more mass. Which one has the higher osmolality, which is osmoles per kilogram? Of course, B. How about osmolarity? Of course B. It has more particles, therefore more osmolarity or osmolarity. That's why, clinically speaking, we don't care about the distinction between osmolarity or osmolarity because we're talking about serum, we're talking about urine that are made of what? Water. And the density of water is what? One. So one kilogram of water is one liter of water. And the one liter of water will weigh one kilogram. So clinically speaking, there is no difference between osmolality or osmolarity. You can say serum osmolality, serum osmolarity, use them interchangeably, no one cares. If you remember my video on osmosis, I've told you before that osmosis cares only about the number of particles, not the mass, not the size, not the nature, just the number. What do you call the property that depends only on the number and nothing else? Colligative property just like osmolarity or osmolality. In my previous video on urine osmolality, I've told you that both osmolality and specific gravity are trying to measure what? The concentration of urine. Which one is better? 
urine osmolality is better than urine specific gravity. Why is that? For three reasons. Number one, urine osmolality cares only about the number of particles, but urine specific gravity cares about the number and the nature of particles. Urine osmolality does not need to be corrected for anything. Urine specific gravity requires correction for the temperature of the sample and the presence of proteins and or glucose. Urine osmolality will give you a wider range which tells us a great deal of info. But urine-specific gravity has a narrower range. When the urine osmolality is high, it means concentrated urine. When the urine osmolality is low, it means relatively diluted urine. Let's review antidiuretic hormone very quickly. If you want to learn more, check out my physiology playlist. Antidiuretic hormone. I am a hormone that's antidiuresis. What is diuresis? The loss of fluid in the urine. Antidiuresis means I'm not gonna lose fluid in the urine. I will reabsorb the water back into the blood, not into the urine. How do you reabsorb the water back to the blood? By targeting the V2 receptor, V stands for vasopressin, also known as arginine vasopressin receptor number two. And by acting on that receptor, I'm telling the kidney, hey, 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 watch out all of that water, bring it back to the blood and do not let it fall into the urine. Therefore, ADH produces less water into the urine i.e. makes my urine more concentrated. So if I have a disease that makes too much ADH, I will have a very concentrated urine. Conversely, if I have a disease where my ADH is either lacking or not functioning, I will have a very dilute urine. When my urine is very concentrated, it means it has high osmolarity and high specific gravity. When it's very dilute, it has low osmolarity and low specific gravity. Urine specific gravity is the density of the urine relative to the density of distilled water. What's the normal range of urine specific gravity? Between 1.005 and 1.030. You can say 1005 to 1030, but most of the time it's between 1010 and 1025. I mean 1.010 to 1.025. And just like urine osmolality, it's going to depend on your fluid intake. If you drink too much water, overhydrated, your urine will be dilute with low specific gravity and low osmolarity. Conversely, if you drink less water, dehydrated, you'll have a very concentrated urine, which means high specific gravity and high osmolarity. Which one is more accurate again? Urine osmolarity. So why do doctors care about specific gravity? It's just faster to measure. Because to measure urine osmolarity, you have to send the sample to the lab and request the osmometer test. Urine osmolarity is measured by an osmometer. Urine specific gravity is usually measured by a refractometer which sees how much light passes through a drop of urine. If my urine is dilute, more light will pass. But if my urine is concentrated, less light will pass. And the computer will give us a number that ranges between these two lovely numbers. This is the most dilute, this is the most concentrated. So what causes your urine to be concentrated? Maybe I am dehydrated, maybe I have too much ADH reabsorbing all of the water from the kidney, leaving less water in the urine, i.e. concentrated urine. And by the way, this ADH could be secreted by a cancer. We call this perineoplastic syndrome, such as small cell lung cancer, water deprivation, extracellular fluid volume depletion, such as vomiting, diarrhea. When you have less fluid in your body, your urine will be concentrated, thanks to the effect of antidiuretic hormone. Next, if I have a state of shock or congestive heart failure or hemorrhage or third degree burns, but my kidney is still okay, the kidney itself is still a good kidney. A good kidney is a kidney capable of concentrating the urine, so my urine will be concentrated. Causes of a dilute urine, i.e. low urine specific gravity and low urine osmolarity include diabetes insipidus, where you lack the ADH in central, or where you have the ADH but it cannot function, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, or you're overhydrated, excessive water intake, or you have a disease in the kidney, bad kidney, cannot concentrate the urine, giving you dilute urine. Any cause of diuresis will increase the fluid or the water in the urine, making it more dilute. A good kidney is a kidney that can concentrate the urine. Healthy kidney, higher specific gravity. But when the kidney has failed in chronic renal failure or chronic kidney disease or worse, 
end stage renal disease, that's a bad kidney. Cannot concentrate the urine, giving me a lower specific gravity. Not just that, it's a lower specific gravity that does not change. Whether the patient drinks more water, less water, the kidney is toast. The kidney cannot function. The kidney cannot sense the change. When you find that your specific gravity is low and fixed, this is chronic renal failure. Also, there is another disease that makes the urine-specific gravity fixed with no variation, regardless of how much water you drink. It's called nephrogenic diabetes insipidus because this is a kidney that cannot respond to antidiuretic hormone, so it has no idea whether you drank so much water or no water. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. If you want more urological topics such as epispadias, hypospadias, testicular torsion, epididymitis, prostatitis, low implantation of the ureter, vesicourethral reflux, posterior urethral valve, ureteropelvic junction obstruction, and much more, download my surgery high yield scores at medicosisperfectsnandis.com. To learn more about asymptomatic bacteriuria, cystitis, pyelonephritis, and other diseases of pregnancy, please download my OBGYN high yields. To learn about renal plasma flow, glomerular filtration rate, titratable acidity of the kidney, download my kidney physiology course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Nanus, where medicine makes perfect sense.